Hello. Welcome to this video, in which we will look at how to manage a company's reverse logistics processes in an orderly fashion, to maintain control throughout the execution of returns. The views, information or opinions expressed, are solely those of the individuals involved. The goal of this video is to provide information, on the selected functionality and process. We will start examining the benefits to be achieved by controlling, and taking charge of, the reverse logistics process. First, using advanced returns management accelerates the return process and improves financial control. Second, it increases process transparency by monitoring the entire end-to-end -end process, providing all information in a single place. Third, it reduces overall reverse logistics handling cost, by allowing an efficient execution. Before we turn to the system demo, we will examine a few keywords. An intercompany return is a return, that is conducted between two or more affiliates or business units, of the same parent company. The intercompany return is conducted between companies in the group, which are different legal entities. Intracompany returns, are returns which that takes place among two entities that exist within one company, resulting in an internal accounting of the transaction. Not to be confused with intercompany returns that takes place between two or more, legal, entities resulting in a legal transfer of prices. A stock transport order is a purchasing document, used to request a transport of material from one plant to another. This is to affect the long-distance physical stock transfer, within the same corporate enterprise. The stock transport order supports intercompany and intercompany business. We run two scenarios in this video. One for intercompany return, and a second for intercompany return. We start with the intercompany returns. In this scenario we will start off by creating the return stock transport order. Next we will send back the faulty material to the original plant, where the warehouse will inspect the materials, in order to determine the follow-up activities. We begin by creating the return order, which is the basis for an orderly return procedure for an intracompany return. Starting the return stock transport order for the intracompany returns process, by selecting the order type, and then adding the plant or distribution center that will receive the goods. Next up is entering which item, or items, which we are going to return, and how big the returned quantity is. We add our plant and storage location, from where we are going to return the goods. Next, we check the confirmation control key, which will determine how we receive the goods. In our case we will select inbound delivery. Then we will also add the reason, for why we are returning the goods. We select end of season. And finally, we save our returns order. Next up, is creating the return delivery. We enter our return order number in the selection criteria. The return delivery is normally automatically created in the background, but for the purpose of showing it is performed online. Now we visit our advanced returns management cockpit, to have an overview of where we are in our returns process. We enter the return order number, and we hide the selection criteria, in order to have a full view of the screen. The returns overview screen contains information about each process step, including its processing status, as well as each document related to the process. Each document is available to access, directly from the overview screen. We will now go to the outbound delivery. In the delivery, we are now simplifying our process by making the picking and goods issue directly, without a warehousing solution such as SAP EWM. And immediately it is possible to see the updated status in the returns overview monitor. We can see that the goods issue has been posted, and that the inbound delivery for the receiving site has been created, based on the confirmation control key which we set in the return order. Next step in the returns process is to make the goods receipt in the receiving plant. The goods are received in the receiving plant based on the inbound delivery. We enter the inbound delivery which was previously created. And we post the goods receipt. Our next process step is to inspect the materials, and determine which follow-up actions should occur. We select the inbound delivery we have just received. And go to the item to enter our inspection results. In our case, we determine that the returned products are in good condition and can be returned to unrestricted use in the warehouse. We add a comment on the goods being in its original packaging, add our follow-up action and save and confirm our inspection results. We finalize our process flow, by return to the Returns Overview app. Going back to the Returns Overview screen, which we can now see give the user a complete overview of all actions which have occurred, or need to be taken, in the reverse logistics process flow. In the details of the returns overview screen, you can see that all process steps have been completed. 
This includes the confirmation of the recorded inspection results, and the subsequent goods receipt from accepting the goods back into the warehouse. Let's now turn our attention to our second scenario, the intercompany returns. In this scenario we will start off by creating the return stock transport order. Next we will send back the faulty material to the original plant, where the warehouse will inspect the materials, and after the follow-on activities have been completed, the returning plant will be reimbursed. We start our orderly returns process, with the creation of an order. We select the order type, in this case a return stock transport order, and enter the receiving plan in the vendor field. In our scenario, we are having three different goods being returned to our main plant. Hence, we fill in the material numbers, quantities of each returned item, as well as the sending plant and storage location. Next, we add the confirmation control key to each of the three line items that we have in our stock transport order. The confirmation control key is set to automatically create the inbound delivery in the receiving plant. The final step, before saving the return stock transport order, is to enter the reasons for returning the respective items. Once all two items have been completed, we save the return order. We create the return delivery to facilitate the logistics return process to the receiving unit. The return stock transport order we just created is selected. The return delivery is normally automatically created in the background, but for the purpose of showing it is performed online. We immediately see the outbound delivery which has been created. We enter the delivery, in order to simulating the warehouse activities by confirming the picked quantities, and performing the goods issue. The returns overview screen contains information about each process step, including its processing status as well as each document, related to the process. We enter our returns document number. And we can see the processing status of each line item in the returns order. We can also review the detailed steps for each individual return. As shown previously, we can enter the documents directly from the returns overview screen. We enter the inbound delivery for the receiving plant. While reviewing the inbound delivery, we also elect to make the goods receipt. When we are back at the returns overview, we can see that our goods receipt document number has been updated and that a new follow-on activity has been automatically created. Next, we perform the material inspection to determine the logistical follow-up activities, selecting worklist based on which delivery we are checking. We begin with checking our first returned item. As it will be possible to reuse, we decide to return the quantity received to our warehouse. If the usability is deemed different for received materials, it is possible to split the line to record each decision. We decide that the first piece is not usable anymore, and therefore we choose to scrap it. Now we are proceeding to evaluate the second piece. The second mobile phone, which was returned, was in good condition. Therefore we choose to keep it, and place it back into our warehouse. Our last returned items are unfortunately both spoiled. We have the information, that these aren't okay and make the decision to scrap them. Next, based on our inspection results, we now determine potential refunds. Again, we work with the inbound delivery. We can determine the refund level for each good returned, and if we have different decisions on some returned goods, we can set different refund levels and save. Now, as we have completed our return process, let's review the status on the Returns Overview app. The goods returned on the first line, you can see all documents and actions which has taken place in the system. You can also see that the decision was to make the stock available again. As you may recall, the second line was subject to a split decision. Here we had one piece to go back to available stock, while the second piece needed to be scrapped. You can see that both action trails are kept separate. Our last item, which was returned, had both pieces scrapped. The functionality shown in this video, regarding advanced returns management, is available in S4 HANA, both cloud and on-premise versions. The same functionality is available also in ECC, although screen layout may differ. Let us complete this video, by repeating the benefits of using advanced returns management for inter- and intra-company returns. First, using advanced returns management accelerates the return process and improves financial control. Second, it increases process transparency by monitoring the entire end-to-end -end process, providing all information in a single place. Third, it reduces overall reverse logistics handling cost by allowing an efficient execution. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. More videos like this coming shortly. See you then.